this Lil Nar, man. 43B, Double G, Narcotic Gang, I don't bang. Glory Boys, you know that. In my glory on the way. I'm here with my boy, Manny Supreme. Where, where my keys at? Red keys is one. For sure. I bet. Ooh, did you get it? Did you catch it? All right, for sure. All right, let's get it going. I hit him the other day because I see I seen when you posted a picture on top of the hawk. Yeah. And uh, he had a lot of D's out here. And I was waiting to get the interview started until I opened them. Yeah. Yeah. When did you first decide, like, okay, slides and shoes is what I want to create and start off with? So, I done had my brand for some years. Like, narcotic shit, I done had it for some years. I did some shoes, Crazy. like, a year ago. That was kind of like a flip of a dunk. And then Nike sued me. <laughs> yeah, that they yeah, sued me, hell yeah. But they sued me out the gate. Like, they just kind of went viral, so they sued me. I was sitting there and then really designed these from the ground up, like, from nothing. There was a completely unique model. When you guys made Jesus, you and Keith, for Almighty okay. Show too. Take that, us back. That was that. last year. Mm -hmm. I was going to L.A. a lot, just pulling up on So, like, going right. to his house. Smoked, like, 100 blunts. And then we'll sit there, though, and make 50 beats from scratch on Fruity Loops. Like, that nigga, an alien. And normally, I be using the engineer. Mm. But So, he, so the thing, he made all the beats. And he rapped on all the beats for the album. And he recorded himself on the whole album. I use the engineer, though. But yeah. he was like, you can get on it. And I'm in his crib. He's like, I was like, all right, I'll have the engineer come. He's like, nah, like, you can get on it for the album, but you got to record yourself. How so long like, it took you? Not too long. Maybe like 30 minutes. He's so <laughs> tuned with the music. He'll go through and start changing shit. So as soon as mm -hmm. I'm done, he start changing the beat. And start like changing my vocals and adding mm -hmm. kicks and snares and all this shit. All right, well, let's get going. You know what's crazy? Yeah. I don't think I never even wrote in the track out before. For real? Bro. I just let go though. see my nigga Quan and them on YouTube. Shout, go out, shout, out, shout out him. He shout hard. Nigga. Shout out. Uh -oh. <laughs> Do you like driving? Cause me typically, it's like, unless I'm going to pop it, I don't like driving. For real. I love driving. For real? I love cars. So love you driving. the one to recommend? Like, oh, I'll drive everybody. Yeah, cause the thing about it, on some fun, when nigga don't know, I get car sick. Really? So if I'm not the nigga driving, I'm being that bit like, fuck, <laughs> man, I'm sick as hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Craziest tour story. It's like my second time in Europe. Mm -hmm. Did my first tour, and we go. My booking agent at the time is from Russia, so the last show is in Saint Petersburg, Russia. Mm -hmm. We go. After the show, everything grave, everything Gucci, but the, the dude from Russia is in there, and they like talking to him in Russian. They cursing his ass out uh -huh. in Russian. I guess he didn't get them free tickets to the show, because it was his hometown. They wanted free tickets. He but they like, yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, yeah, all this shit. Wild <laughs> in Russian, though. Long story short, though, they end up walking out the restaurant, end up throwing the middle of it, like, flip us off. And I kind of like, I was just tired at that point, so I'm tripping. I'm like, finna crash out. I grab a knife off the table. I'm no! Like, yeah, I'm finna stab one of these niggas just like, on some fries. I don't know why. I shouldn't have did it, but I, I grab a steak knife off the table. A steak the knife? That's ass. at least 10 years. Right before I get to there, I drop it, pop it off. Crap, this shit. He like, Arr, like, start screaming. Jeremy, the nigga you met, my manager. Yeah, yeah. So his Shout ass, Jeremy. He's at like 6'4. Yeah. He run out, like, fold it. He run out. They were finna run up and jump me before they even get to me. He Boom. Shout out to Pharrell and Nigo. I watched one of your uh, Montreality interviews, and you said you're a big fan of them. What would you say is, like, your favorite collection or style of bait that, you know, Lil Nard likes to wear? And I like probably, like, a lot of the hoodies. I got this bait Carhartt jacket that a lot of niggas ain't got. I really what like color that. is he? It's great. But I like a lot of the accessories and shit. You feel me? Mm. I just look at what Nigo did with the brand, and I was like, I was kind of modeling what I did with Narcotic kind of after that. Remember the first day you got this? I had like a year. Okay. I don't remember the exact date. Okay. I'd be okay. fucking with my cars. I got like... I got like this Panamera, like this Porsche. I done did a lot of engine work too, and wrapped it and shit. Right. Same shit with a vet, same shit with this. So like, I, you know what I'm saying? Now I know you were a big skater growing up and stuff like that. You remember the first time getting your skateboard? Yeah, like my stepbrother type mm -hmm. shit, like stole folks' skateboard from down the street. <laughs> like he was like tweaking with it, and he was like using it and shit. I'm like, man, this shit cool. Like what the fuck? And he was like, man, you gotta try it. Yeah. And like I used it, and I'm like, man, this shit hard. Like I'm trying to ride it or whatever. Yeah. Skate a little this bit. This in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like trying to skate a little bit, mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, like. All right, like, uh, let me see what's to it. And mm -hmm. I remember, I, like, like I didn't really use it after that, but I saved up some bread, and, like, I got one for, like, a birthday or Christmas or something. Like, yeah. really, that's how I got the name Nar. Because, like, you know, I'm from the east side. Skateboard, and they look at that, like, what, you on that white boy shit? You on that gnarly, gnarly shit? Like, shit. Yeah. If you can, what you say is your favorite vibe of some of your unreleased music? It's, like, turnt, but a little futuristic sounding. Mm -hmm. Got to be horns and bells in the back. I, lately, I've been liking beats with, like, real instruments in them. Mm. Like, bells or horns or, like, violins and shit. They add emotion to yeah, the record. Yeah, just, just turn shit. Like, shit'll get you moving. Who has your favorite unreleased feature? Like, on my shit. On your Me and Nudie got this song I really like called, uh, what's it, uh, Big Flame. I'm already knowing. When did y'all make that? Y'all made it in the studio together, or? Yeah, we made it in the studio actually right over there, like, six months ago. That's like hard. That. Like, a little bit over that. First time meeting Keith. Yeah. Take us back to that. Uh, first time meeting Soul. Really, like, 
talking to him, smoking with him, like more locking in. We yeah. did this song called New Bugatti. I want to say like two years ago now. And it's me, Ski Master, Slump God, and Sosa. Shout out Ski. And so we shot me and Ski's parts out here. Went to LA, and then me and So like linked up for the video and shit. Yeah. We was kicking it there, and that's really when I got cool with him. Then we shot that video from there. We've been we've been cool talking here and there. And then Spree. he spoke to me about the label and shit. Kind of went from there. What would you say has been like your biggest lesson that you know just being around Keith, you've been able to pick up that's helped you with your artistry. He don't really give a fuck what nobody say. He ain't really fucking with too many people. Mm -hmm. And he really be in the crib a lot, just working. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of that way. Yeah. And so being around him, seeing somebody at that level, yeah. you know that shit is like, all right, I'm doing the right thing. What is Lil Nar's message to the youth? To the youth, I say, do you, man. Don't let nobody tell you what you're doing is wrong or right. You feel me? The it, Man, focus on you, man. You can't let these people stop you. You can't let these people discourage you. You feel me? You just got to lock in. And if it's meant for you, that shit going to happen. It might take a little time, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to get together. Hey, with that being said, it's time to cut up, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we got a little traffic, but I, I was really waiting to hit it, but we yeah, got traffic like a motherfucker, really. There's so many people in the city now.